Wild West. There's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Seal the hour of their death, grant that we may pass our days in the practice of holiness and justice, and that we may be able to quit this world in the peace of a good conscience. Amen. Amen. May Job Powell rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, boys. Thank you. 
Good morning, Ken. I'm sorry to be here about Joe. You're late for the burial, Marshal. Well, I was out at Fort Dodge last night. I just heard about it this morning. Uh, preacher? We are in the Valley of the Shadow of Death, Marshal Dillon. Well, if you're all through here now, I wonder if you'd read a few prayers over another man. We got him in a grave just over the hill with. Another man? Man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. Job 5-7. Who was this man, Marshal? How'd he die? He was murdered last night. I didn't hear about any murder outside of Job here. Where was this shooting, Marshal? It wasn't a shooting. It was a lynching. I just buried my brother, Marshal. Billy Saxton shot him in the back. Aren't you using the word murder a little loose around here? Only the law can hang a man without it being murder, Ken. The law's too slow sometimes. You know something about this? All I say is that he shot my brother and he deserved hanging. Hanging, maybe. Lynching's a different matter. What difference it make? He got what was coming to him. He had a fair trial coming to him, like any man. For example, Cam, I'll try to see that you get one. What? If you're guilty of leading that lynch party. Well, say it out, Marshal. You accusing me? I got no evidence. And you won't get me. There isn't a man in the country who'll stand still for bushwhacking. Saxton got his due, and that's that. Maybe. All right, come on, preacher. Let's bury him. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. Genesis 9, shake. Show me the grave, Marshal. Why don't you just arrest Cam Powell, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he won't admit anything, Chester, and I can't find a witness. There must be somebody who'll talk. Cam's a bigger man than ever now with Job that the others don't want to cross him. Mm-hmm. He owns a lot of land, all right. And Job also owned a piece of the bank. Cam will get that now. Ranchers always need money, so they won't talk. Yes, and maybe they're ashamed, too, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe. I saw lynching once. And not a man there could look you in the eye for a long time afterwards. You weren't in on it, were you, Chester? Oh, my gracious, no, Mr. Dillon. I was just a small boy. That was back in Waco. They hung a cousin of mine there. Oh, why? Well, sir, it's kind of hard to explain. He was about as honest a fellow as I ever knew. Outside of some loose notions about other people's cattle. But, Mr. Dillon, I just don't believe that struck him as stealing. Why not? Well, because there wasn't anything personal about it, if you know what I mean. Well, I don't, but maybe you can explain it to me. Well, sir, just that there was all those cattle running loose on the plains, and I guess they seemed like a natural part of the landscape to him. He figured anybody could own them. Your cousin wasn't very bright, was he, Chester? I didn't know him well enough to say, Mr. Dillon. But anyway, they shouldn't have lynched him. No. No, they shouldn't have. And nobody's going to get by with lynching around Dodge if I have anything to do with it. No, sir. I heard Billy Saxton was at the Texas Trail last night. Maybe I can start there. He sure must have hated Job to kill him like that, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. I'll be back later, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Hello. Well, I can remember when you'd give me a smile. What's the matter? Nothing, Matt. Someone been bothering you? You might put it that way. Where were you last night, Matt? Why weren't you around? Yeah, Chester and I rode out to Fort Dodge on business. It was late, so we slept there. I, I thought this town could go one night without trouble. You sure thought wrong, didn't you? You're upset about the lynching, that is. That's it. Aren't you? I heard Billy Saxton spent some time in here yesterday. I hate men. I think they're awful. Savage beasts. It'd be worse if it weren't for the law, Kitty. Now, tell me about Saxton. He could tell you himself, Matt, if you hadn't picked last night to wander out of town. Now, Kitty, this isn't like you. I'm sorry, Matt. 
He seemed like such a nice kid. Yeah. Where was he from? I never heard of him around here before. The Dakotas, somewhere. He was just a cow puncher looking for a job. No more a gunman than I am. No, you can't be sure, Kitty. He say he'd ever been in Texas? The Powells came from Texas, didn't they? Never really. So they never mentioned Texas one way or the other. What did he talk about? Horses, mostly. How he'd like to have a little spread of his own someday. And a woman. I see. And he talked nice about it. He wasn't like these hard cases around here. Anything else? <laughs> Cam Powell was in this morning. Told me not to talk about Billy, especially to you. No? Well, what'd you say? I told him I'm not afraid of him, but maybe you are, so why didn't he warn you against talking to me? <laughs> that please him? I also told him if I was a man, I'd kill him. Who else was in on it, Kitty? I don't know. One thing, though. Rice Stewart came in here last night. Must have been afterwards. He sat over there in that corner and got drunk all by himself. Real drunk. Not like Rice. Right? No. But maybe he was in on it and couldn't stand himself afterwards. Maybe that's why he had to get drunk. Well, I'll go see him. Anyone who was there would be in trouble, too. Wouldn't they, Matt? Yeah. But I have a feeling Cam really headed this thing, and if I can prove it, I'll have him up for murder. I'll keep my ears open, Matt. Thank you, Kitty. I think I'll ride out to the Stewart Ranch. Rice isn't a man who can lie with much conviction. Good luck, Matt. Yeah, I'll see you later. for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, do you know how old the school building in your community is? If it's over 25 years old, the chances are that it's woefully inadequate to the present demands on it. Join with the groups in your community working for better school conditions. Remember, better schools build a stronger America. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Well, thank you, Miss Stewart. Ah. Got a pot of coffee in the stove, Marshal. Oh, thank you, ma'am, but uh, I'd like to find Rice first. Anything wrong, Marshal? No, I'd just like to talk to him. Rice come home real late last night. He was awful drunk. First time in years. If you'll forgive me, Miss Stewart, I better find him. All right. Guess I'd rather Rice told me about it himself. Must be something up. Cam Powell was by earlier. Hasn't been around in months. Uh, what would you say Rice was, ma'am? Hasn't strayed far from the house today. He's coming in for coffee. Uh-huh. <laughs> Think he's drunk a gallon already. <laughs> well, I'll be back for some myself in a little while. Sure, sure, Marshal. Rice? Rice, you in here? I'm here. Who is it? Matt Dillon. Oh. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Rice. Can I uh, take a little of your time? I'd ask you up to the house, Marshal, but I think I'd rather talk here. Uh, Miss Stewart already asked me in. She, uh, she hasn't heard about what happened in Dodge last night, has she, Rice? No, Marshal, she hasn't. How come you? How come you didn't mention it to her? What I tell my wife is my business, Marshal. Yeah, sure. But you know, she's bound to hear about it later. Maybe she'll wonder why you didn't tell her right off. That's still my business. 
She said Cam Powell was here this morning. Anything wrong in that? <laughs> you don't feel very good today, do you, Ryan? I got drunk yesterday. Last night I got drunker. Is that what's bothering you? Well, I'm not as young as I used to be, that's all. You're a poor liar, Rice. I figured you would be. Yeah. I suppose I am. Look, Rice, I've known you for four years, and I've never heard a bad word against you. But yesterday you were a little drunk and got mixed up in something you're ashamed of now. Cam Powell's threatened you if you talk about it. Isn't that right? That's right, Marshal. Well, have you decided what you're going to do about it? I, uh, I don't know, Marshal. I just don't know. Well, then maybe I'm wrong about you. Maybe you're no better than Cam and the rest of them. Look, it's done with now, Marshal. Why can't we just forget about it? We just can't forget a lynching, right? That'd make it too easy for the next one to happen. I'll kill the man that starts another one. Then way. why are you going to let Cam get by with this one? Well, by heaven, I'm not. I should have stopped it then. I don't know what was wrong with me, but... But I'll face up to it now. What do you want to know, Marshal? Where were you when Job got shot? At the Longhorn. About six of us were having supper. Job went down the street for some cigars, and then we heard a shot out back, and we run through the kitchen and found the cook outside, old Billy Saxton. Mm -hmm. He'd shot Job when he passed the street end of the alley. Did the cook see it? Oh, she said he did. Then what happened? And Cam he went crazy when he found Job was dead. And, uh, I, I don't know, Marshal, but before I knew it, we'd slipped out of town with that boy. And Cam hung him on that little tree about a half mile down the road. Yeah, I know. I cut him down. And that cook, uh, that, that, that Hank something or other. Uh, I remember he grabbed Saxon's gun when we run out back. And I can't get it off my mind. Nobody ever even looked at the boy's gun to see if it had been fired. Cam just hung him on the cook's word for it. Mm-hmm. All right, right. Thank you. Uh, will you be a witness if I need you? I'll see you through now, Marshal. All the way. Oh. I feel better already. <laughs> All right. Let's go get some of your wife's coffee, right? Yeah. Then I gotta get back to Dodge. It's good coffee, Marshal. <laughs> Chester? Chester? Chester, where are you? I'm out back, Mr. Dillon. I'll be right in. What? What's that you've got all over you? Paint, Mr. Dillon. White paint. Paint? Hey, where'd you get it? Now, what are you up to now, Chester? I sent St. Louis for it, sir. I thought it'd be a good idea to make the hitching rail out back all white. Well, what for? Well, sir, we might be in an awful big hurry some night, and that... Uh, all right, Chester, all right, all right. All right. Look, uh, I, I want you to go get cleaned up. I, I want you to have supper at the Longhorn tonight. Well, I sure do thank you, Mr. No, Dunn. no, no, Chester. I I want you to go there alone. Oh. Yes, sir? It's for a reason. Do you know the cook over there, Hank uh, something or other? That's Hank Ashford. He's not a very good cook, Mr. Dillon. How long has he been around? Oh, about a week. I don't think he likes cooking much. He don't seem to be very willing either. Well, it doesn't matter. I doubt if he'll be around for long. Why not, sir? I'm guessing that he'll be wanting to get out of Dodge fast after you let it drop real casual like mine that I've ridden out to arrest Cam Powell. Is that so? You going to bring Cam in tonight, Mr. Dillon? No, no. You're just going to make Hank Ashford think I am. And don't let anyone else hear about it, though. Oh. I've got it, sir. You happen to know where Hank rooms? The Dodge house, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, that's pretty fancy for a cook, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right, you go to supper about 6 o'clock. And I'm gambling that Hank Ashford will be packing his things at the Dodge house by 7. All right, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Evening, John. Uh, hope you're not looking for a room. We're all filled up. Texans, mostly. <laughs> well, that's fine. What room's Hank Ashford got? 
There's 310, Marshal. Top of the stairs, straight down the hall. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, you been up to anything? Looks to be in a mighty of a hurry when he come in. He's here now? Went upstairs just a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Stop him up, Marshal. that gun lay where it is, mister. Here, I'll just put it in my belt. Less likely to get you in trouble that way. You're the marshal, ain't you? You leaving town, Hank? Yeah, I am. Why? I'm tired of cooking, that's why. You got Billy Saxton's gun up here, Hank? What? Or shall I tear your stuff apart and find it myself? No, no, it's, it's in that drawer there. Yeah. But I wasn't that lynching, marshal. I can prove I wasn't. Yeah, I'm sure you weren't. Bells are here. Yeah, the bell's clean. I thought this gun killed Joe Powell. It did. I cleaned it, that's all. Hey, you're pretty neat, Hank, for a hash house cook. Yeah, catch this. Now what? And you handle that gun pretty well, too, for a cook. Look at the way you're holding it now. I don't want that gun... What are you trying to prove, Marshal? You're a gunfighter, not a cook, Hank. All right, Marshal. I used to handle a gun, but I'm looking for the peaceful life now. Any law against a man changing? No, but you're under arrest anyway. What for? I'll think of something. Let's go. Hank wouldn't eat any breakfast, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, that's too bad. He says he won't be here long anyway. <laughs> they all say that, don't they? Yeah, he may be right. I see Cam Powell coming across the street for him right now. You going to let him go, Mr. Dillon? Well, yeah, we'll see. All right, Marshal. What's the bail on Hank Ashford? There's no bail at all, Cam. What do you mean, no bail? You can't hold a man like this. I'm not holding him. You mean he can leave? Any time. Then what'd you arrest him for in the first place? Oh, let's say, uh, suspicion. Suspicion of what? Well, uh, drunkenness. He wasn't drunk. No, but he might have got drunk. You're pretty high-handed with that badge, aren't you, Dylan? You tell me, Cam. You ought to know about being high-handed. We're wasting time. Turn him loose. I want to get out of here. I'll get him, Mr. Dillon. Hank's a right-handy man to have around, huh, Cam? What does that mean? Well, he can cook. Probably turn his hand to most anything. Sort of a jack of all trades, isn't he? I wouldn't know, Marshal. Thanks for bailing me out, Cam. I didn't have to bail you out. You're free. Is that right, Marshal? That's right, Hank. So go on, enjoy yourself. <laughs> I sure will. Then I'll start by having a drink. Come on, Cam. Let's see if the Alphagans is open. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. You think Hank shot Job Powell, don't you? Well, that'd be my guess, Chester. Then why'd you let him go? No evidence. They lynched the only witness. But I've made him a little nervous now. He'll get real jumpy with the help of some liquor. Well, what good will that do, sir? They just might hang themselves, Chester. Yes, with a prod or two from me. <laughs> Are you still here, gentlemen? May I buy you a drink? What are you doing here, Marshal? Why do you want to buy us a drink? Yeah. Uh, bartender, uh, give me that bottle there, will you? Kim, yeah. Kim, I don't like this. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute, Hank. I'm too big a man in Dodge to get pushed around by any Marshal. Yeah, I just want you to have one drink before you leave, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> for you, Cam. And for you... Thanks. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, here's the may he rest in peace, Billy Saxton. Wait. You looking for trouble, Marshal? You're the one who's got trouble, Hank. What do you mean? You turned me loose yourself. Yeah, I know. 
But what about Cam here? Who? You think Cam's going to let you go after everything you've told me? What you tell him, Hank? Nothing. He's lying. I told him nothing. <laughs> so what are you talking about, Marshal? Just that I've got about all the evidence I need, Cam. Won't you ask Hank? He can tell him. Go on. Hank, if you cross me, I'll see you die for it. You believe him, do you? Well, go ahead. You didn't have the guts to shoot your shut brother up. yourself. Shut up. Who are you going to hire to shoot me? Shut up, blast you. Shut me up. Shut You're me drunk, up, man. Use your head. You've got to send enough trouble already. I have. If you'd let me shoot that boy when he stumbled on me, we'd have been all right. Stop it. Stop you it. may be rich, Cam, but you sure ain't smart. I'm going to kill you, Hank. <laughs> well, draw on me and I'll have two pals tomorrow. All right, hold it. Both of you. We've heard enough. <laughs> well, there you are, Hank. Marshall's heard all he needs. You're done for now. Yeah? <laughs> well, I shot a marshal in Trinidad once. Don't see why I can't shoot one in dark. Don't try it, Hank. Why not, Marshal? <laughs> <laughs> Good riddance. You're under arrest, Cam. Hank shot Job Marshalls. You heard him say so. I heard him. But I'm still interested in who murdered Billy Saxton. And you're right back where you started, Marshal. Seems nobody knows about that lynching. I know about it. Right, Stewart. I'm not proud of it, but I was there. I witnessed the whole thing. I'll take your gun now, Cam. I guess you win, Marshal. Nobody wins this time, Cam. Now, maybe the next time anybody gets an idea about lynching a man around here, they'll think twice. Now, you lead the way. <laughs> Smoke under the direction of Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was especially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Paul Dubov, John Daner, and Tom Tully, with Joan Danton, Ralph Moody, and Lee Millar. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.